So these are the uh, award winners of the uh, Travel Grant Award from uh, CZI, which they get for uploading their data on the DCP and uh, scientific excellence as well. And so this award gives them the opportunity to actually go to the HCA meeting and uh, give a talk. So the first talk is by Benjamin Stewart. He's from Cambridge, and he's going to talk about uh, immunity in kidney. Hello, my name is uh, Ben. Thanks for introducing me. Um, I'm from um, the University of Cambridge and the Wellcome Sanger Institute, and I'm supervised by Mena Clatworthy. Um, and I'm going to tell you today about some work that we've been doing um, to try and understand how immunity is organised in the kidney, both in terms of anatomical space, but also in terms of developmental time. So the kidney is a fascinating organ to work on. It has a role in uh, preserving and maintaining homeostasis. So anatomically, um, there's an outer cortex, and then going down, a medulla and a pelvis where urine collects. And the kidney is made up of repeating nephron units, which are arranged over corticomedullary pelvic depth. Um, and in the cortex, we find the filtration apparatus and proximal tubules. And as we go down, we eventually encounter the pelvic epithelium. And this is the first port of call for ascending bacterial threats to the kidney. Um, so these nephron structures are formed in development um, through nephrogenesis, um, and the ureteric bud grows into the cat mesenchyme, which is instructed to uh, undergo proximal distal patterning and convolute into the mature cell types of the nephron. Um, there's also a... Um, sorry. Uh, a, a, a tissue resident immune compartment to the kidney... Um, and previous work in our lab has uh, examined CD14-positive mononucleophagocytes, and we found that um, defense-polarized macrophages are present in the medulla, and this is ultimately orchestrated by the height-salt environment that's found there. So we next wanted to sort of more broadly profile immunity in the kidney and leverage our ability to um, generate kind of atlas-scale data sets using single-cell transcriptomics in both the developing kidney and also in the adult kidney. Um, and to do that, we um, have got tissue from uh, two sources for mature kidneys, both tumor nephrectomies and organs which have declined for clinical transplantation. And then we also have a collaboration with the Human Developmental Bioresource, um, and we've used six kidneys from uh, seven to 16 post-conception weeks. And these have been dissociated using a standardized tissue processing protocol, um, and then we've used uh, high-throughput droplet encapsulation, single-cell RNA sequencing, and ultimately we've got around 40,000 annotated cells for the mature kidney and 27,000 annotated cells for the fetal kidney. So, um, so next we'll take a, uh, a bird's-eye view of um, the mature kidney, and here we can identify... Um, populations of nephron cell types dominated by the proximal tubule, um, endothelium and stromal subsets. And we found uh, an unappreciated diversity, uh, previously unappreciated diversity of immune cells within the kidney with uh, T cells, NK cells, B cells and mononucleophagocytes. We then asked where do these cells live within the kidney um, and we categorize them into cortex, corticomedullary, and pelvis, so we're going down through depth here. And we find that proximal tubular cells and podocytes are present in cortical samples, as we'd, as we'd, expre as we'd expect. Um, interestingly, we found an enrichment of B cells within the cortex and a relative enrichment of mononucleophagocytes in uh, the medulla and pelvis. So looking now at the fetal um, atlas that we've generated. Again, we see uh, the developing nephron, stromal and endothelial compartments, and also a very diverse immune compartment. And looking now through developmental time, at the earliest time points, we see cat mesenchyme cells predominantly. And then as we go through, we see the acquisition of mature cell types within the kidney. In the immune compartment, uh, the earliest cell types we see are macrophages, and they're joined at later time points by adaptive cells, T cells and B cells. So we hypothesize that the, ascend, that the ascending bacterial threats are the, the main immunological challenge for the kidney, and we ask whether the epithelial compartment has any autonomous defense role. And we find gene expression patterns which poise the pelvic epithelium for defense against bacterial infection. They express a range of antimicrobial peptides, but interestingly, this was absent in the fetal pelvic epithelium. 
Next, we looked at myeloid cells within the kidney, and we found um, a range of mononuclear phagocytes present in the fetal kidney and also in the adult. Interestingly, there were two populations of CD14-positive mononuclear phagocytes in the adult kidney, and we wanted next to establish uh, whether these were developmentally distinct and whether they were functionally distinct. So macrophages uh, might come from two sources, either in early fetal life, um, seeding from erythromyeloid progenitors, or throughout life from bone marrow-derived monocytes. And interestingly, our MMPDs um, exhibited similarity to the macrophage ones in the fetus, and these were the earliest immigrants into the kidney. So next we compared the MMPDs and the MMPAs, and we would predict from the gene expression patterns that the MMPAs were polarized for antimicrobial defense. And indeed, when we um, prospectively isolated these cells, we found that the MMPAs had an enhanced capacity for antibacterial phagocytosis. So then we wanted to kind of put this together and understand whether there were meaningful interactions between the nephron and the myeloid cell types that we'd identified. And we found that the pelvic epithelium was enriched for ligand receptor interactions with neutrophils and also antibacterial mononuclear phagocytes, which would be predicted to position them at that region of the kidney that's vulnerable to ascending bacterial infection. We found co-expression of antimicrobial peptides and neutrophil recruiting chemokines in the pelvis in human samples. And in a murine model of uh, urinary tract infection, we find that neutrophils are specifically localized to this deep region of the kidney, the pelvic epithelium. Um, and again, comparing the fetal to the mature kidney, we find, anti um, we find neutrophil recruiting chemokines are present in the mature nephron at the, the deep aspects of the kidney, but that's not present in the fetal nephron, suggesting this gene expression pattern is acquired as we go through life. So in summary, um, the epithelial compartment of the kidney clearly has an immune functionality, and that's so nated. Um, in fetal and mature kidneys, there's a diverse population of immune cells, and these are acquired through fetal development. And epithelial immune interactions appear to localize antimicrobial mononuclear phagocytes and neutrophils to the pelvic epithelium to counter the dominant immune threat. So this data is freely accessible. It's on the uh, Human Cell Atlas portal. And then we also have an interactive browser so you can explore the data. Um, so this is a huge collaborative effort, and it's driven by uh, Mena Clatworthy, Sarah Teichman, um, Sam Bajati, and on the developmental side, Maz Hanifer. Um, and I'm really grateful to the organizers for giving us the opportunity to talk about this um, and to uh, CZI for bringing me here. Thanks a lot. Questions? Um, I think a lot of people find uh, that detecting neutrophils is a little bit difficult uh, when using droplets. Um, yeah, um, that you... so we, we certainly have neutrophils in our data set. Mm -hmm. um, they are difficult to detect in the mature kidney, and they generally have lower UMI counts. Um, so I, I suspect it's a technical phenomenon. Additional questions? Are you doing any spatial analysis? Um, so we've tried to um, sort of in, in initially d develop these atlases of single cell RNA seq and then um, go with focus questions to our human samples, sort of like I've illustrated. Um, but it would be interesting to get even more resolution on where these different MMP populations live. Anna. Ben, uh, first, congratulations on astonishingly beautiful work. It's uh, excellent. Um, I had a question. It struck me as you mentioned, and I uh, did not recall um, uh, seeing this before. Why do you hypothesize that you find these B cells in the cortex in particular? Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, so I would imagine that there are cues that specifically bring them there, um, chemokines, that are derived from some niche, but I, I don't have any further um, sort of data to support that. Interesting. Great. Thank you for a great talk. Thanks a lot. <laughs>